Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Hey, good morning, church. It's so good to be with you again. Obviously, not as good as being right here in the auditorium with you all together. But I can tell you this, through a lot of prayer, through a lot of just interaction with you throughout the week on uh, text message and social media, I really still get the sense that we are a group of people, believers of God, that are gathering together in a big way. I'm so encouraged by your response to our online messages. Uh, please continue to share them on your social media, and, uh, and let's just get the word of the gospel out as much as we can. I want to focus on just a, a couple passages this morning as we hop into some Bible study. And I want to uh, just let you know that at the end of the sermon today, uh, we obviously don't have the, the abil- availability to do an invitation by any means. And so what we're going to do is at the end of the sermon, we're going to put up one of the scriptures that we use uh, during our lesson today. And we're going to have some uh, songs playing behind it. And we're asking you to just meditate on God's word. We're asking you to contemplate the question of how can this section of God's word change my life this week? So if you can do that as a family and have those discussions, I'm also going to include some discussion questions, the same as we do on Wednesday nights, that'll go along with this that you can find on our church website. Um, To be honest with you, those discussion questions are going to remain the same. We're just walking through the discovery Bible study method of study in scripture. So we're going to use those same scriptures that you'll see after the sermon to walk through the Discovery Bible Study. Our goal and our hope is that you grow closer to the Lord on your own, as a family, and that of course we can be growing together as a church family. So let's hop in to Exodus chapter 34. Uh, I wanna look look here to begin with because it's just a reminder of uh, where we're gonna get to in 2 Corinthians coming up. You'll remember that when Moses um, got the 10 Commandments from God, when he was up on the mountain with God, he had the ability of the uh, the the awesome, awesome time to be able to see God, but only the back of God because he could not handle the face of God. And in Exodus chapter 34, beginning in verse 29, uh, this short section reads like this. It says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. And when Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant. And they were afraid to come near him, but Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him and spoke to them, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the command of the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face, because whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. And then Moses would put that veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord again. Man, what an awesome ability that Moses had to go meet with the Lord and and in a very physical way would be reminded of the great glory of God. His face was radiant. And there was some fear that was involved there, of course. When, when people saw that, uh, they became afraid of, of Moses at that time. And, and one of his solutions was to veil his face so that uh, those people wouldn't see the effects of talking with God. And so they would not be afraid. Well, flipping over to 2 Corinthians in chapter 3, I want to begin reading in verse 6. And we have this really awesome uh, comparison between Old Covenant and New Covenant that I want to remind you of before we talk a little bit of application for today. Beginning in verse 6 of chapter 3, it says this. It says, He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter, or the law, kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in the letters on stone, this is the stuff that Moses received from God, if those came with glory, so that the Israelites could not, could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, fading though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? 
And if the ministry that condemns men is glorious, that's the law, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Church, we've got to look at those differences that are there. The first one being this, that, that between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, there is so much more glory now than there was when Moses' face was caused to shine. We look at that and we think, man, uh, God and that interaction with God and Moses, that caused so much glory, but we have even more. That glory was fading, and we have a glory now that will never fade away. We also see that the Old Covenant, um, that between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the, the New Covenant causes us to live in boldness, not in veiling and hiding that the glory that we have, that reflection of God, moves into not a hiding of, of that glory and not into a veiling of it. We're not worried if people are afraid of God's glory at this point, but we have to unveil and show it to the world. And third, we have to understand this, uh, is that, well, again, actually not third, but just reiterating, is that this is something that will never, ever fade away. The Spirit brings freedom. Not bondage like the law did. We are to reflect God's glory so freely. And we're also supposed to be transformed. From the inside out, transformed. Moses' transformation was very physical on the outside. But the Spirit's work that we have today does a transformation from the inside that will overflow outwards. You know, the way a lot of Christians are today, I would, I would really guess that it would be more comfortable for most of us to live back in the Old Covenant kind of days. I mean, think about it. It was so easy uh, as far as uh, we had the law, and if you could check off the things that were going on, the things that you did to keep the law, then you would feel good about yourself. Uh, we're, we, we really, a lot of times today, will move into that checklist kind of faith where, hey, we went to church, we did this, we did that, and so we feel really good about ourselves. Uh, there, there was not much of a, a pressure to evangelize or to reach out or to show God's glory. If you were God's people, you were God's people. You were chosen or you were not. And, um, and it would just be so easy to veil your face of, of what God has given you. You see, there wasn't much pressure on the believer uh, to be outreaching and, and, and teaching people and showing people. You just had your relationship with God that was based on keeping the law, which of course we know would never be done perfectly. That law was there to expose sin, to teach us our need of Jesus Christ. But a lot of us revert back that way. And that was the way that's been all throughout. Even the New Testament, you see Paul had to go back in Galatians and show the people and teach the people that you didn't have to cling to the, the old law. Stop going to things that were very physical because it wasn't needed anymore. We live in a spiritual time with freedom that is promised there in 2 Corinthians. But man, the biggest part that I get out of that 2 Corinthians verse is this, is that you and I are supposed to be transformed people. What verse do you think about when you think about transformation? I know my mind goes directly to, um, 
to, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. In Romans chapter 12, uh, we get this awesome, awesome charge for us to, to not be... Um, not to be conformed any longer to the patterns of the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So today, the application I want to give you is going to come from Philippians again. And we're going to read a little section of verses that we read even last week. But I want to challenge you to look even a little bit deeper this morning. In Philippians chapter 4, we get this idea of renewing our minds in a big way. And we get this beginning in verse 8. We're going to go all the way through verse 13 today. It says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or, or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Then Paul goes on to say this. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. He says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. What an amazing and appropriate section of scriptures for today, where we are called as people of the new covenant of people of, of the Spirit. We're called to be transformed by our God. I'm asking you to consider today, will you allow your minds to be transformed? In a world right now where, where you turn on the TV, we're, we're talking about negative things. Uh, all we're hearing about is the doom and gloom about what could get worse. But will you train your mind, actually, Will you allow God to transform your mind to be thinking about and meditating about those things that are good and pure and holy? And of course, at, at times like this, many of us are already thinking about the things that we don't have. But listen to Paul's charge and his example in those verses that follow, that he learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Let's be a people this week who are much more mindful about the positive things rather than the negative things. But even taking it a step further, let's be a people who are mindful this week about the things that we have been blessed by God with rather than the things that we're lacking. We'll always be able to find lists of things that we don't have that we want. We'll always be able to find things that we wish we had but we don't. But maybe if we transform our minds like Paul did and be able to be content in every situation, we can live a life that is closer to that that God wants us to live. Contentment is not, is not about having an abundance. Contentment is about the daily bread that Jesus taught us to pray for. So will you be content today with what God has already given you? Church, I think about in my life right now uh, what it is to, to be content. And, uh, and, you know, we have a situation right now, many of us do, where we are living uh, different times, where our kids aren't going to school, but they're at home. And so, uh, look, stay-at-home moms or, or, or dads, if you're working from home right now, you might be pulling double duty in a big way. And you might be thinking about, like, what is going on? How, how, how do we be content in this situation? I'll tell you what, we have found that, that our family is growing closer together, sometimes in harder ways, but growing closer together because we're, to, because we're actually spending more time together. We've been on hikes out at our, our state parks and, and, and seeing the beautiful, beautiful nature that God's given us. Our kids are riding bikes outside. We're eliminating screens from their faces. 
And listen, there are so many times where we can think about the, the things we don't have. We don't have the ability to drop our kids off at school right now. But here's what we're finding out. That's causing us to have the ability to influence personally our kids in a greater way. So will you be content? As I said at the beginning of the lesson, we're going to put up a scripture today uh, and it just for you to read and for you to meditate on. And I'm asking you to think about this week how your mind can be transformed by a great God as people of a new covenant, as people who are filled with God's spirit. How can your mind be transformed to be more content and to be more positive? Love you, Orange Avenue, and we're praying for you in big ways.